today i will describe a very easy chapter on chemistry this is acid and base mainly today i will describe the acids the topic today i will show you the definitions of acids then the scale to determine the strength of acid some limitations are there i will describe that one next some examples first the definition of acids was developed by arrhenius according to arrhenius acids are compounds that give hydrogen ion in solution and bases are compounds that yield hydroxide ion in solution so whenever we are considering acids we have to describe it with respect to the solution mainly the water so there are some limitations on the definition of arrhenius later on bond state in my next slide it will be given bond state describe acids who give up protons that means acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors take a example this is a chemical reaction between sulfuric acid in water water is acting as a base because it is accepting a proton from sulfuric acid so sulfuric acid is acting as proton donors and water is acting as a proton acceptor the base water after accepting a proton it is converted to h3o plus which is known as conjugate acid whereas the acid itself h2so4 give up its proton forming hso4 minus that is known as conjugate base now this definition has also got some limitation the most modern theory is according to lewis lewis according to the definition of lewis acids are molecules or ions capable of coordinating with unshared electron pairs whereas bases are molecules or ions have such unshared electron pairs available for coordination take a easy example trimethylamine reacts with boron trifluoride gives a, an adapt me3n plus bf3 minus here the lone pair on nitrogen is accommodated in the back end 3d orbitals of boron so boron is accepting the electron pairs from nitrogen therefore bf3 is acting as the lewis acid whereas trimethylamine me3n is acting as the lewis base so these are the modern definitions of acids and bases now how we can measure the strength of an acid we have to use a pka scale 
Now what is that? Suppose Hj is an organic compound. Now Ha will be called an acid when it will liberate H plus in water. The calculation is based on that assumption that Ha is taken in water. Now Ha after giving proton to water is converted to A minus plus H3O plus. So, if we consider the acidity constant of this equilibrium, we have to write this is equal to activity of H3O plus into activity of A minus divided by activity of HA into activity of water. Now, as the amount of water in this reaction is very high, activity terms are replaced by concentration terms. And this activity of water is high enough to take it as a constant term. So, this constant term multiplied by this constant term, we write this like Ka is, is equal to concentration of H3O plus into concentration of A minus divided by concentration of HA. So, higher the value of this Ka, higher will be the acidity. Now, take an example. Suppose one acid has Ka value of 1.79 into 10 to the power minus 5 at some temperature. Now, this is not easy to remember the Ka values of the acids. But it is very easy if we remember it through a new scale pKa where pKa is equal to minus log n to the base Ka. Now this 1.79 into 10 to the power minus 5, this big digits is converted into 4.5. 76. This is very easy to remember and easy to compare also. So, this compound has the pK value of 4.76. Now, if another compound have pK value of 3.77, we can compare which one is more acidic. The smaller the numerical value of pKa, the higher will be the acidity. So, through comparison, we can say that this compound is more acidic than this compound. Now, there are some limitation of this discussion also. First of all, Acidity is measured in water, a very specific solvent. The concentration of water is so large that it is taken as a constant. Not only that, pK value approximately greater than or equal to 16 that's such lower acidic compounds cannot be measured in water. Why? Because water itself auto ionizes to form H3O plus plus OH minus. 
Now the concentration of H2O plus provided by water itself is sometimes greater than the organic compound whose pK value has to be measured. Similarly, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, those are fully ionized in water. So, we cannot compare the acidity of these acids in water. This phenomena is known as leveling effect of water. Now, I will discuss what are the factors involved in the acidity of organic compounds. The first one is strength of the HA bond. HA, the organic compound, when liberates acid, it will form H plus plus A minus. Therefore, it is very clear to us that the strength of HA bond is very important. If it is easy to break, the compound will be more acidic. Next factor is electronegativity of A. That means the atom which is associated with the hydrogen atom which has to be liberated. Suppose in an organic compound carbon-hydrogen bond is there, oxygen-hydrogen bond is there. Now from our class 12 knowledge, we know that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So, these bonded electrons are more close towards oxygen compared to the this example. As oxygen is more electronegative, it is very easy to rupture this bond than this bond. So, if we compare the pK value of methane CH4, this is methane, where carbon hydrogen bond is present, and this is methanol CH3OH, where oxygen hydrogen bond is present as well as carbon-hydrogen bond is also present. This is methanol. So, whenever we are thinking that this methane or methanol is acting as an acid, we are thinking about the cleavage of CH bond or the cleavage of OH bond. Now, as oxygen is more electronegative than carbon according to our knowledge this methanol will be more acidic than methane. Now it is verified experimentally the pK value of methane is approximately 43 whereas that of methanol is approximately 16. As I told earlier that lower the pK value, higher will be the acidity. The third factor is stabilizing conjugate base, factor stabilizing conjugate base compared with H. Whenever we are considering an acid HA, after giving up the proton, it is converted into the conjugate base. This is the conjugate base. 
Now the factor is factor stabilizing conjugate base with respect to this H. That means if A minus is very stable, H will automatically depopulate its proton and convert it to A minus. That means H plus will be liberated. So we have to consider the stabilizing factor of the conjugate base also and among these factors this stability of the conjugate base is the most important one and the last one not the least is the nature of the solvent that is also playing a crucial role in determining the acidity of the organic compound. Now if we compare the pK value of some organic compounds like methane, methanol, acetic acid and formic acid, sorry, Analogous compound to methanol is phenol and then formic acid. The pK values of methane as I told earlier it is approximately 43, it is 16. Phenol is of 9.95 and formic acid is of 3.77. So if we compare the pK values, we can make a statement that formic acid is the more acidic among this compound followed by phenol then methanol and then methane. From these specific compounds we can make a generalized statement also that carboxylic acids are more acidic than phenols which is more acidic than alcohols. Phenols means aromatic alcohols. This is aliphatic alcohols and then alkene. So alkenes are the least acidic compound. Now why this is happening? I explained that why methanol is more acidic than methane. Now why phenol is more acidic than methanol? That means why an aromatic alcohol is more acidic than an aliphatic alcohol. The reason is very easy. If we compare methanol there will be methoxide ion. This is known as methoxide ion. And if phenol deprotonates it is called Phenoxide ion. Now these phenoxide ions are more stable than methoxide ions. Why? Because if we draw the canonical structures, There are several canonical structures possible for this phenoxide ion. Now what is the significance of this phenoxide ion stabilization through delocalization? This negative charge is not localized on oxygen. This negative charge is delocalized in the aromatic system also. So the negative charge is not centralized but this situation does not occur in case of this methoxide ion. So the canonical structure of the phenoxide ions are more stable than the methoxide ion. So the conjugate, if you consider the stability of the conjugate base, phenoxide ion 
is more stable than methoxide ion. So it will be easier for phenol to liberate its proton than methanol. Now if we progress towards right of this series, we will find that formic acid is more acidic than phenol. Why this is so? There are similarities. Similarities in what sense? The, the, here also hydrogen, this labile hydrogen is attached to oxygen. Same thing in this case also. But the difference is that if formic acid liberates its proton liberates its proton formate ion is produced in the solution. Now this negative charge is delocalized also in these three atom centers from this oxygen to this oxygen. So whenever we are assigning the negative charge, in both cases the negative charge is residing on the oxygen atom. But when we are considering the phenoxide ion, you will see that the negative charge is residing on oxygen as well as on carbon atom. Now as oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So, this canonical structure is more stable than these canonical structures according to the rule of the stability of the canonical structures. That negative charge should reside on the more electronegative atom. So, electron withdrawing carbonyl group enhancing the electron affinity of the oxygen atom in case of this formic acid and the stabilization possible in the methanoate anion involving two canonical structures of identical energy. These are the two reasons why formic acid is more acidic than phenol. Now the last factor was the solvent effect. We are discussing about the acid strength in water only. So we will consider the water first. Water has got the initial inability that most organic compounds are not soluble or partially soluble in water. This is the disadvantage of water. But water is the singularly effective ionizing solvent. This is very important. Water is the singularly effective ionizing solvent. Why? There are two key factors. One is its high polarity, approximately 80, and its ion solvating ability. Now, when we are considering a molecule like HA, the bond strength say F is inversely proportional to the dielectric constant. The equation is F is equal to M1 M2 by Four pi epsilon r square. M one, M two are the masses of this H and A. R is the distance between the H and A. So, other thing remaining constant M one, M two, r pi four, F varies inversely with this 
dielectric constant or polarity of the solvent. So higher the polarity of the solvent, lower will be the F, that means the bond strength. So if the bond strength is lowered by executing the solvent like water, HA will disintegrate to form H plus and A minus, which is the required condition for the compound HA to act an acid. Now the story does not end, end here. If H plus and A minus is formed in water, these are positively polarized as well as negatively polarized ions, very reactive. So, if there are no additional stabilizing factor, they will recombine again to form HA. Now, this H plus is hydrogen bonded to the water molecules. So, the positive charge on this hydrogen is stabilized through the delocalization of its charge on the enveloped oxygen molecules of water molecules. So there is an encapsulation of H plus in water. There is a solvent envelope around H plus. Not only that, this negatively charged species formed through the dissociation of this HA is also encapsulated in water molecules. So the negative charge is also stabilized in water. If the stability of the ion pair formed in the solution is maintained, this HA will spontaneously dissociated, dissociate to form H plus and A minus, which is the prerequisite condition for an organic compound to act as an acid. So, this solvation envelope is very important in case of water molecule. Close to water molecule, another solvent is there, that is methanol. If we compare the dielectric constant of methanol with water, water we know that it has got dielectric constant is approximately 80, whereas that of methanol is 37. The second one. So there is a huge gap between water and methanol if we consider the dielectric constant. Not only that, size of methanol molecule is greater than that of size of water molecule. So if we think the capsule situation there are more water molecules around this H plus and less in case of methanol. So it also indirectly explain why water is a better solvating agent. So this is my very short lecture regarding the acid base. Thank you.